So let's talk about what happened uh, with the A levels in the UK. Uh, following on Scotland, the UK was like, or oh, England, and I guess Wales was like, do you know what? We can do as badly as you almost, because they had a couple. They had a couple, you know, a week to you know figure some things out. And so we're going to talk about Gavin Williamson in a minute, but uh, let's let's talk about this for a sec. So. Um, so what we can see from this article is that um, you know it's mostly disadvantaged kids who had their grades adjusted, and that um, some private schools had their uh, average, their like A A star grades um, bumped because of the schools you know progress in the last few years. It's a really stupid system. Um, honestly, it's really stupid and confusing. And the government or well, Ofqual were warned about this. So this is from um, uh, about this guy here, uh, Hugh uh, Dong. I think, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his name right. Um, so. He's talking about the algorithm because he um, had some prior knowledge about what was going on. So the algorithm um, checked the results went widely different from the past and the expected national grade distribution for the subject downgrading um, outliers. Ofqual tried to reassure students by saying that the national results would be broadly in line with previous years and might be slightly higher. But um, Dong uh, worried what it would mean for Ta Tan, um, that's his son, and... Um, Again, pronunciations are my thing, I'm sorry. And his classmates, using what scant information Ofqual had made public um, on his methodology and an understanding of statistics gained from his PhD in physics, he analysed the 2017 to 2019 A-level data for Matthew, uh, the Matthew Arnold School, that's the school his son goes to, and with a little help from his sister, a statistician at the Medical Research Council, he came to the conclusion that there was virtually no chance of providing grades for students in a way that satisfies the double criteria of being fair to the individuals and controlling grade um, nationally. He warned the national. He warned the Education Select Committee that 39% of students between A star to D and D would be lower than the teacher assessments. And last week, he shared the findings with the Guardian. He repeatedly sent emails to Ofqual only to receive a stock reply. Publicly, Ofqual insisted that Diong was wrong in what may now appear to be a carefully worded statement. Spokesman said, we expect the majority of grades students receive will be the same as their centre assessment grades, and which they're not wrong on because around 60% of students, I think, got their expected grades. However, 40% did not, around 40%. And so they're not wrong, but it doesn't really, you know, do anything. You know, if someone gets um you know murdered and he's like well you know he wasn't shot you know he said he was gonna get shot he got stabbed instead you're gonna be like but he's dead so he's you know he gave them the exact number or around about the number they said you're wrong and then they spun it as no we were right you know we did the right thing for the majority of students but you know 40 percent is still a very high number but on thursday morning ofco admitted that nearly two in five so 30 39.1 percent of pupils in the country saw their a levels downgraded from their teachers estimates De Jong had been bang on. And so he's this guy and his sister, you know, you know, academics, high level academics, figured this out. Um, so Ofqual must have known this would have happened. So any any spin Ofqual, any government pe people put on this, it's, it's a myth. It's a myth. Because this guy figured out, uh, with the help obviously of his sister, the statistician. Um, so yeah, Ofqual, if you, you know, if they claim that this couldn't be foreseen, or if any government people say this couldn't be foreseen, you're either incompetent and you didn't know what was going on, or you didn't own your line. There's your two options, go. And so if we keep going, ah, oh, here it is. So um, this is talking about the algorithm. So for instance, if you're halfway down the ranking list, um, then your grade is roughly whatever the person halfway down the ranking list in pre previous years had obtained. The definition perpetuates inequality. The government assumes that you will score lower if your center scored low in the past, and they assume you score high if, you're, if your center scored high in the past. So what happens is that if the school did well in the past, then the you know if you're you know an average student based on the rankings, you will get you know an average grade of what people got previously. But if you're classed as an average student by your teacher. Um, but then the person who was average last year um, got a poor grade, um, then you're going to get a poor grade. Something something on those lines. Um, you're going to need a big brain to figure this stuff out, I think. Um, so, so far, only um, I've only included input one and input two. However, input three, your previous scores also affect the grade distribution. So how does it affect them? For A-levels, instead of just looking at the grade distribution from your test centre, they try and look at what grade distribution of your test centre would be, assuming um, people in the past um, had similar GCSE scores and they adjust for this. What is unclear to me is whether this technical wrinkle has much of an effect. And, um, you know, this stuff is really wordy and confusing. I'm not going to lie. So if we just keep going... Um, you know, we'll see this, which is a visual representation of what the hell is going on to the people who've been downgraded. So mock exam grades. So this is a student whose mock exam grades are A, A and A. 
her teacher, the center of sesquare grade, thought she would get an A star, an A, an A star. And you can say the teacher's overflating it, uh, overinflating it, as opposed to the mock exam. But we know that um, you know the more mock exams you do, the more you study, and the more you get better at writing, um, the better you'll do when it comes to exam time. So you know, getting a mock exam. Say you took this mock exam in February, right, and your exams in June. If you're getting A's then there's, you know, a strong chance that you will get an A or you will get an A star because you're hitting a high grade without even finishing, you know, all of the material or, you know, w without you finishing, I guess this training grade would be the best way to put it. You know, the mock exam is there to train you, for, train you for the exam. And so you haven't finished, you know, your training essentially. This isn't even your final form for the exam. Dragon Ball Z reference. Um, and so if we look at what Gavin William had to say, was a gentleman by the name of Peter Ashton. I think you remind my listeners was your lecture in politics. He said this about the algorithm system earlier this morning. Well, I'm not very keen on algorithm systems <laughs> for various reasons, to be honest with you. I don't think it's a very good idea. It, it tends to sort of disadvantage high achieving pupils in low performing schools. Isn't your former lecture correct, Secretary of State? Um, my lecture is uh, former lecturer, Mr. Ashton, is always correct. Ah, and actually, so you, so you uh, agree uh, it does disadvantage There is. Look at the smile on this man's face. There is sometimes a danger where you have an exceptionally high performing child. There's not, you know, it's not an exception. You're talking about 40%, you joker. In a low performing school, yes. to it be in a situation where they. And you'll see at least a good few kids in those schools that are high achievers in a low performing school. I've seen it firsthand. Don't get the grades that they want to. And what we've asked exam boards is where we think they think there may be outliers. Seen some examples of kids who's like, um, you know, they don't do AS anymore, but in, in Wales, I believe they still do um, uh, AS exams. And so there was a person, a kid whose AS results. Um, were higher than their um, A2 results, the, the one predicted by the government. So how is it possible that a person's AS results are lower, given that AS and A2 are about the similar level? How is that possible, Gavin? And so there's a lot of pressure for him to quit. And uh, let, let's not forget who Gavin Williamson is. He's, he's not very competent. He's not very competent, all right? He's the guy who got sacked. Let's not forget who, who Gavin Williamson is. Gavin Williamson is the one who was sacked over um, leaking... Uh, information about the uh, Huawei uh, 5G thing. So the inquiry um, followed reports over a plan to allow Huawei limited access to help build uh, the 5G network. Mr. Williamson, who has been Defence Secretary since 2017, so this this article obviously is, um, you know, at the time he was Defence Secretary. He's not now. He was fired until uh, Bojo hired him again. Um, denies leaking the information. Let's not forget who this man is. He leaked, um, you know, confidential information to the press. And I can't get rid of this crappy music because of the independent... But, you know... This is this is the biggest joke, right? Students will be able to use their mock exam results to progress to university. Uh, however, if those aren't good, because some people don't do well in mock, uh, mock exams because they either don't study, which I guess is okay um, in some ways. I guess this year you are unlucky though. Um, you know, they're saying you can reset. So a reset is um, seen not favorably by, you know, top universities and top places. And also, um, you know, it shouldn't be called a reset because you haven't sat the exam in the first place. How is it a reset? And you can appeal the decision under the triple lock thing, but it's going to cost you money. Why if you ain't got money to to appeal? In Wales, it's free. In the in England, it's not. How is it that England is the most powerful out of the four nations gets treated the worst out of the four? It's a joke. It's an absolute joke. And um, you know, Gavin Williamson, the man who was fired over allegedly leaking um, you know confidential information to the press is the guy telling, you know, is the guy in charge of this whole mess. All of these ministers that have been charged or in charge of anything related to coronavirus, apart from Rishi Sunak, who, who has a bit of credibility, all of them have done badly. So this, this idea that, you know, getting good grades and performing university is not an effective measure when it comes to certain things. And th this is an example of it. He's incompetent. Gavin Williamson is absolutely incompetent. He can't do his job properly and, you know, he's he's botched the futures of so many kids that won't be able to go, um, you know, fulfil their dreams. This 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 girl's future has been ruined. They're going to have to do resets. They might not, you know, another year of stress and pressure. And we don't even know if those exams can go forward in autumn because of COVID. So I don't even know what, what's going to happen now. So big up to you, Gavin Williamson. And, um, you know, you're an idiot. And, you know, this is my message to, you know, A-level students, you know, it's, 
you know, if you're going to go for a reset, you know, go for it. But do your best um, to get as much tuition as possible because we don't even know if school is going to be open properly in the autumn. They say that now, but the COVID rate's going up still. You know, it's not looking too good. And so we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if school's going to reopen properly because you've got one group of A-level students, the new batch, and then you've got the old batch who might want to reset. So teachers are going to be strained even more than they are now or in the normal term time. So this this is an absolute joke. Gavin Williamson's a joke. Bojo's a joke. And my message to you A-level students is work hard to, you know, um, if, you, if you're going to do a reset, work, re work hard because um, the, those exams are not easy. And, um, you know, remember which party did this to you because next time out, yeah, be ready to vote because this, this group will continually screw you over. And there's one, so one thing I want you guys to remember, yeah, millennials watching Gen Z get screwed over by boomer politicians first time, bro. They'll do it to you again and again and again. Do not forget, do not forget this, what they have done because they will keep doing it. And, you know, just going to end on this. Don't. I don't want to hear anyone say, you know, I did bad at A-levels and I'm fine because maybe you did something, you found something you're really good at. Maybe you're lucky or maybe you're this man here. You know, I fluffed my A-levels, taught me how to hustle first um, to get first to get a place in university and haven't stopped ever since. Grades are great, but grit and perseverance win every time. James Bethel, fifth baron of Bethel. This man's a lord. He's talking, he's, telling, he's a hereditary lord. He's telling people about grind. Get out of it. Get out there. I don't want to hear no one talking about, you know, you know, you just got to work hard in life. These kids, these people have worked hard at A-level. They didn't get a chance to sit their exam. And for a lot of them, or not a lot of them, but for about 40% of them, that that chance was taken away from them. I don't want to see anyone talking about, you know, work hard in life. They did work hard in life. They did work hard for the last few years. Just to get to A-level, you need, like, semi-decent grades. So, look, I'm going to leave it there. I've rambled on long enough. Um, if you're an A-level student, feel free to, uh, free to comment. Um, tell us about your experience. Uh, tell me about your experience and, you know, um, how that's gone if you stumble onto this video somehow uh, subscribe like comment share and um, yeah hopefully I'll see you in the next one